So the red wolves we have here uh, at Zoo Knoxville and actually in the wild are pretty much the same. We manage these guys as they are at any point in time could be released back into the wild. That is the whole nature of the program. So when you're able to come to the zoo and see these guys for the most part, uh, they will be uh, far away from the fence line. They're not really sociable near with people. Uh, but because we have so many at the moment, we're fortunate in that you can see them. Currently in the two exhibits we have, we have 10 animals. So at any given time, there are or will be a wolf out for someone to see. These guys being wolves, and, and they are very secretive. They are not, most people think, are very scared of wolves, think they're very aggressive. But these guys are very timid, very shy. And actually, if you were in their uh, native habitat, you could actually walk by them and not even know they're there. They were going to, they're going to hunker down, they're going to stay hidden, they don't want to be seen. These guys do not live in large packs. They're generally, there's a breeding pair, male and female, uh, they will sometimes have their uh, offspring of a year to two years with them. Their packs never really get over eight individuals, and so it really helps them also blend into their environment and to not be seen. We got involved in this program because actually in the early 90s there was a release program in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. They released some wolves into the Cades Cove area in the hopes that they would establish there and once again roam wild. These guys are known as America's Wolf. They were originally um, were found on the eastern coast, uh, up and down. They did not go into Canada. They were found as far west as Texas, but they didn't go down into Mexico. So. For wolves, these are the true American wolf. Their wolves were pulled, uh, but we managed to keep wolves here to continue the education and to breed them. Uh, we've been pretty successful after a dry spell of about 23 years. Uh, we had one lone pup born, and then the following year we had the eight born. Uh, so uh, we did pretty well by wolves. They became extinct in the wild. In the late 60s, their numbers became so depleted that in the early 70s, uh, Scientists, U.S. Fish and Wildlife went out and collected the last 17 animals. And out of those 17, only 14 were found to have pure enough genes to, to base uh, a breeding population. So when you think about that, I have 10 animals behind me in the exhibit, and there was only 14 uh, that started the population. So these 10 came from those 14, so it's pretty exciting. Well, to support these guys, first and foremost, when we're able to open again, coming to the zoo is a great way to visit these guys, learn about them, uh, show their support, and that helps us care for them and continue uh, reproducing these guys and bolstering their populations. Beyond that, Google searches. There's several, several organizations out there that uh, raise money uh, for these guys. Uh, there's a lot of um, lawsuits and things going on right now that are putting these guys in danger. So getting involved that way of just educating yourself finding out, signing petitions when they're available to say that you support these guys. Not only red wolves, but gray wolves are still now also under persecution. Uh, these guys are not the big bad wolves, and <laughs> no wolves are the big bad wolves. Uh, so educating and just finding an organization that you feel like you want to support uh, is great for these guys. They need all the help they can get.